Joining me now to discuss from New York City is America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. Dan, if you want to work from home now, you might have to miss out on a few thousand dollars from, from your salary. How's this going to work? I think it really comes down to what the job market and the economy looks like right now and for the last few years employees have had the leverage. So because there's been a worker shortage, employers haven't had much choice but to be as accommodating, even more than accommodating, in order to have people working. Now we see the economy slowing down and we could see a change in who has the leverage. Now, if employers ultimately are in a position to say, listen, come back to work, in the office or face a percentage cut in pay, then it's up to the employee to decide, you know what, working at home is enough of a benefit to offset that. Or if the job market can bear going elsewhere, then you do that. So it really is a matter of what the environment, the job environment is going to look like in the, in the months and years ahead. I know me, you know, I'm, I'm like Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob. If you say you're going to cut my pay by a penny a year, I'm going to, I'm going to show up to the office, Dan. So if I, if I were working from home, I would not like this. I would get myself in the car and drive to work. Now, speaking of, of work, I got to get to this as well. This is from the New York Post. Three quarters of Wall Street's junior bankers want to quit their jobs. They're, they're, they're tired of the, the, lack of work-life balance. Uh, they said they weren't able to use, a lot of them said they weren't able to use their vacation days because of their demanding schedules. 72% said they were pushing to keep their hybrid work schedules amid worries of being forced to return to the office five days a week. So we're seeing some of that complaint in there. Uh, that's a pretty big number. Three-fourths of junior bankers want to get out of their job. Well, it, you listen, in the banking industry, especially with the large investment bankers, it is pretty well known that the hours can be quite grueling. And, uh, you know, you have a, a group of workers that simply do not want to have that type of work-life balance. They want to be able to do other things outside of work. So, again, we see here that the environment the work environment or the or the the job picture is going to really dictate what happens here because if you don't like the terms of your employment and you can get another job you leave if you can't well then you're potentially stuck there so it really comes down to if these uh, banking firms want to keep their people they're either going to have to pay them more and that may not work or they're going to have to retool the number of hours that these workers are are in the workplace otherwise they're going to lose them yeah that was going to be my next question dan if if their back is up against the wall what what do you think is more likely because 75 percent that's a really that's a really alarming number do you think that the banks you know if if the workers were serious about this uh that the banks would would either uh, jack their pay up accommodate their schedule what do you see happening with with these statistics well, they're going to do whatever they need to to be able to get the work out the door, to get the work done. So if they don't have enough people to do it, well, they, they can offer more compensation in order to keep them working a large amount of hours. Or they're going to have to try to hire more people to be able to spread that work around. Listen, any employer, n number one, the, the work, the product, the service has to get out the door. And no, no matter how they do it, that's how they have to find a solution for this situation. But if they're in a position where they don't need those workers or they're, they view the workers as expendable, well, then they're not going to make the change. Right, right. And, and one more thing before we, before we leave, Dan. Uh, the, I'm getting this from CNBC. The IRS is to set to refund a very welcome $1.2 billion in late filing fees for about 1.6 million taxpayers. This has been an ongoing conversation because during coronavirus, the, the, the IRS got very behind on giving people their tax returns. Now it looks like it's all going to hit all at once. Um, you know, as an accountant, what do you make of this? And, and what do you see the IRS needs to do to, to 
reform their tax codes to where they're able to actually, to where something like this doesn't happen again, to where people can get their money back because it's their money, right? It's not the government giving us a, writing us a paycheck. It's our money. Uh, how can we see to it that, that we get our money back in a more timely fashion? Well, people may not like this answer, but the truth is the truth. And the IRS has been understaffed for quite some time now. And I'm not talking about creating an army of auditors. I'm talking about people that can simply process tax returns and do what the IRS needs to do, meaning apply your taxes and then give you a refund. And the way they got behind during the pandemic was a combination of things, but one of which was the PPP program because the I that fell to the Treasury Department and ultimately the IRS. That was the priority. They focused in on that and, and the processing of tax returns kind of got pushed off. So that's why you had so many people waiting for their refunds and it wasn't a, a good situation at all. Now you have uh, perhaps the shoe on the other foot where many people who were not able to file on time because of the pandemic ultimately ended up facing penalties along with interest. So the IRS is saying, you know what, during that period of the pandemic, we're going to be a kinder, a kinder and gentler IRS, and we're not going to enforce those, those penalties for late filing. Well, and, and now, you know, people, a lot of people still haven't gotten their tax returns back. I suspect it's because the IRS is a little too busy practicing uh, how to raid Grandma Esther for not putting her garage sale uh, uh, compensation on her W-2. Just my, just my opinion on that. Dan Geltrude, America's accountant, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you, Addison.